As greenhouse gas reduction has become a priority around the world, the global farming community is faced with the dual challenge of keeping production on pace with population growth while reducing emissions of these gases and without being a burden on the profitability or workload. It's a monumental task, but early results in research by the USDA Agricultural Research Service may point to a small change in fertilizer selection that could very well increase yields for farmers while simultaneously reducing the level of nitrous oxide, a significant greenhouse gas that arises from the soil after applications of nitrogen. A key element of the research involved studying the differences made in crop yields and nitrous oxide emissions when nitrogen stabilizers were employed. Dr. Jerry Hatfield of the USDA ARS explains how the stabilizers make such a difference. Urease is an enzyme that's naturally abundant in our soil and you put urea fertilizer onto it. What it does is it urease takes the, the urea, converts it into a nitrogen form that is then susceptible to volatilization into the atmosphere. So what a urease inhibitor does, or a product like Agrotain, basically prevents that from happening. So it stays in its original form, doesn't go anywhere, and then becomes available later in the season through the natural process of, of mineralization, uh, immobilization, a number of different things that happen in a nitrogen cycle. What we have noticed is that when we can uh, use stabilized nitrogen materials, that tends to delay the, the release of, of nitrogen in the forms that these bacteria can use that has a better chance of reducing nitrous oxide emissions because what it does is let the crop grow large enough so it can compete for bacteria for this available nitrogen. One of the things that we found when we began to look at different forms and their effect on N2O reduction was anything that we could do to stabilize the nitrogen. So adding agritane to a material, adding that type of product to a nitrogen form just holds it in place. And as we hold it in place, then it becomes available to that plant later in the growing season. As it turns out that nitrous oxide has a potency of, of about 300 times that of carbon dioxide in terms of its greenhouse gas potential. And also that in the U.S., agricultural practices are a main source of that nitrous oxide emission to the atmosphere. So what we're trying to do is understand the processes that control nitrous oxide production from soil. and also, uh, the flip side, uh, since that nitrous oxide represents a loss of nitrogen from the environment, it represents a, a potential loss of potential nutrients to the crop. Sources cited in the study state that agriculture contributes approximately 78% of the total nitrous oxide emissions in the United States. With that in mind, the research has clarified the fact that when it comes to improving fertilizer practices, what is good for the environment is going to be better for farmers as well. Our research project that we're conducting here is really trying to understand the role of different forms of nitrogen, not only on the greenhouse gas emissions, but also on crop performance. What does it mean for crop yield? What's it mean for the growth of that plant? Uh, all those different components that producers would look at and say, this system makes sense and I understand what it does. By understanding how we can control nitrous oxide emissions, we both uh, preserve that fertilizer, that nitrogen in the soil that the crop can use, while still eliminating the adverse effect of having greenhouse gases emitted to the atmosphere. It's important to study it because we're going to see increasing pressures to reduce the amount of nitrogen that's applied to, to our agricultural lands. And as we face that pressure, we're going to have to make each pound of nitrogen more efficient. So as we look at changing the forms of nitrogen, or adding stabilizers to what forms we do use, producers are still going to ask that question, what's it mean for crop yield? At this particular site, we've got some uh, chambers here that actually measure nitrous oxide emissions four times a day, and we've been doing this since March. In, in our study, we, we're looking at the, uh, the surface applied applications of urea and, and other different forms of, of fertilizer. And typically what happens is that these fertilizers are applied uh, in the spring when the crop is fairly small. So what happens is the, the crop doesn't represent much of a, a sink for this nitrogen. All right, That fertilizer just sitting on the surface and it's susceptible to a loss either by uh, volatilization of ammonia when that urea is, uh, is converted to ammonia or when bacteria act on that ammonia or nitrate can convert it to this uh, greenhouse gas nitrous oxide. The effect that changing the the forms of nitrogen and their availability has tremendous impacts on crop production because typically farmers and producers put their nitrogen on before planting and some of that nitrogen may escape into the air, some of it may leach down to the, to the groundwater or, and move into our rivers. 
but if they keep it in place, then it ends up being captured by that plant when the plant really needs it. One thing that surprised us the most as we've looked at this research is how beneficial nitrogen stabilizers are to maintaining the green leaf area of a plant. Because one of the things we find is that the faster a plant goes through senescence, and when you leaves lose their color, the lower the yield. So anything that we can do to maintain that green leaf area longer translates into yield. So that, that's one of our surprising findings that we found. Doctors Hatfield and Parkin and their USDA colleagues plan to continue their research, but the initial results clearly point to the use of urease inhibitors as one practice that can both improve crop production and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So when I talk about this research, it's not only about greenhouse gas and environmental effects, but it's also about improving nitrogen use efficiency. How do we keep the nitrogen on the soil and into the plant where we want it, at the same time improving our environmental aspects of that practice? As we think about greenhouse gas emissions, what comes out of the soil, and if we reduce those, that means that we retain more nitrogen within that soil profile. And as this plant has a real hunger for nitrogen at this time of the year, because nitrogen is critical for us to create a high yield. And as we add stabilized materials like agritane, means that we can basically produce more crop with less amount of nitrogen applied. What's important for the general public to understand is that as agriculturalists, we're doing everything we can to not only increase our food security, but also protect the environment at the same time.